Hello everyone. Let's go ahead and continue with logarithms and let's take a look at the laws of logarithms. Now there's basically three laws that you need to remember. The first one is right here. It says if you take the log of A plus the log of B, then you're coming out with the log of A times B. Now notice I'm omitting the, uh, the base here because let's just go ahead and use log base 10 for the sake of convenience. But of course this could be log of any base. So we'll just go ahead and use log base 10 for now. But again, remember, you could apply it for any base. Okay, and then number two says, if you have the log A minus the log B, then that's going to be the same thing as the log of A divided by B. And if you take N log A, that's going to be the same thing as log A of A to the N. Now remember, with equality, you can go either way. You can go, like say for example, if we started off with something that looked like log of AB, we could go ahead and change it so that it looks like this because those two are equivalent forms. So even though I've written it this way, remember that you could also read it the other way as well. Now, what are these three laws of logarithms used for? Well, there's basically two things that they're used for. One is to simplify an expression with many logs into one log to solve an equation. Okay, we'll take a look at an example of that, but basically what that means then is that if you have a log, 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 you can combine all of those logs into one single logarithm, and then if that's equal to something, then you can actually go ahead and solve for it. Okay, now B, it says you can make a complicated single log into an expression of simpler logarithms. So for example, if you have one really complicated logarithm, you can actually go ahead and break it up into many smaller and simpler logarithms and there's advantages to that as well and of course we'll go ahead and see how that comes into play as we look at some of the problems that we encounter. Now one of the things that I do want to go ahead and mention and this uh, is a mistake that's made by quite a few people when they're first learning these laws of logarithms is that they make this association and I just want to be very particular and make sure that you do not make this particular association because it is incorrect. Okay, the log of a over b is the difference of the two logarithms. It's log of a minus the log of b. It is not the same thing as the log of a divided by the log of b. Okay, so just be very, very careful that you do not ever make this association because it is incorrect. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can, uh, let's take a look at some examples of these three logarithms, uh, laws of logarithms in action. Now I'm going to start off with number three first, and it will be apparent as to why I'm doing that. But let's say for example, and notice again I'm using base 10, I just wrote it here just so that we can really kind of focus on that as well. Uh, if we have the log base 10 of 1000, notice that that's the same thing as the log base 10 of 10 to the third. Now, if I go to the log base 10 of 10 to the third, basically what I'm using now is this property here. This form here is exactly the same thing as that form there. It's a log base 10 of 10 to the third. In this case, the a is 10 here, this base, and n is going to be 3. I can rewrite that one in this form then that says n log of a. So, what that comes out to be then is 3 log base 10 of 10. Now, I know that log base 10 of 10 is equal to 1. Now, let's go ahead and make sure that everybody's clear about that. If I go log base 10 of 10, if that's equal to x, what is that going to actually be equal to then? Now, in order to solve this again, I need to go ahead and change it into its equivalent exponential form, which is the same thing as 10 is equal to 10 to the x. So of course, therefore, x is equal to 1, and I can then go ahead and say that that is equal to 1. Okay, so now that we have that cleared up, we can then go ahead and just say then that 3 log base log base 10 10 is just the same thing as 3 times 1, which is the same thing as 3. So I can go ahead and use this property here, this law of logarithm, to go ahead and simplify this to just 3. Now, I could have done it from here as well, but I wanted to go ahead and show how you can actually use that property. Okay, let's go ahead and continue then, and let's take a look at number 1. This property here, 
And let's say, for example, you have the log of 10 to the n, 10 times n is equal to log 10 plus log n. So notice I'm starting up again with this side here and I'm expanding it to those two. And I come out with log 10 plus log of n. And remember, just as we said over here, the log base 10 of 10 is the same thing as 1. And so you can simplify it to this there. Okay, and then the last one that we have is this one here, number 2. Again, I'm going to start off with something that looks like this and expand it. So I come up with the log of 11 over, 10, over 100 is equal to the same thing as the log of 11 minus log of 10 squared. So notice I'm going to be using that property here of number 3 to bring the 2 in front and, and write an equivalent form of log 11 minus 2 log 10. And notice that the 2 log 10, of course, again is 1. So I can write log 11 minus 2. Now, basically what's happening here is I'm taking a more complicated logarithm and simply simplifying it into, uh, I'm expanding it into a string of simpler logarithms. Okay, uh, let's see. Yes, this one here. So what happens then is that one thing that you need to also recognize is that you can also go in the other direction. If I started off with 3, I could actually rewrite it to look like this if I needed to. If I started with 1 plus log n, I could go through this whole process to come up with something that looks like this. If I had 11 minus, log 11 minus 2, I could go through this whole process and come up with something that looks like this. So it's going to be very important that you actually be able to recognize that these two are the same in the process by which to get to these two, because sometimes you're going to need this form or you're going to need this form. Sometimes you're going to need this form. Sometimes you're going to need this form. Sometimes you're going to need this form, and sometimes you're going to need this form. But just remember that those two are equivalent, and it's just going to, it's just going to depend upon which, serve, which purpose you are trying to serve. Okay, let's take a look at one example where you actually have to use uh, a couple of these laws to actually solve something. So let's here's example number, uh, I think this is example number five, or maybe four. Okay, and let's say for example you have the log of 10x squared divided by 3, and you want to expand that and rewrite it as a string of simpler logarithm logarithms. Now, of course, if we go ahead and take a look at this, we have multiplication, we have a power, and we also have division. So in other words, we're using all of those. So let's just go ahead and start. Now, when I go ahead and take a look at this, the first thing that I see is division. So I'm going to say that this is log 10x squared minus the log of 3. And then this part over here, of course, I can no longer do anything with. I can't simplify it any further. But this one over here, I can, I can expand it further by using the multiplication and the, uh, let's just use the multiplication one first. This is log of 10 plus the log of x squared minus the log of 3. And then I can actually use this property here and simplify that one to log, uh, sorry, excuse me. This is log 10 plus 2 log x minus the log of 3. And then, of course, I notice that this is actually equal to 1, so I can go 1 plus 2 log x minus log of 3, okay? And you can simplify it that way. Now, you can also go ahead and do something like this, where you have 2 log 5, ah, okay, we'll end there, we'll end there. And we'll take a look at a couple of other things in class. Okay, so just to kind of wrap things up again, these are the three laws of logarithms that you have. They are basically used to either simplify an expression with many logarithms into one logarithm, to solve an equation, which we'll take a look at. We'll take a look at an example of that in class. Or you can take a complicated single logarithm, like we have right here, and break it up into an expression of simpler laws, which looks like that. Okay, so let's see how you do, and we'll talk about it in class. Good luck. See you later.